Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create layer IDs in Twinmotion. In this video I'm going to be using this scene I've set up here with some vegetation and a landscape piece along with this kind of water in the foreground and we're going to be creating layer IDs for each of my elements, my trees, rocks and building to give us mask layers that we can then use when we post produce our image in Photoshop or After Effects once we've rendered it. Now, layer IDs are really useful for essentially isolating certain parts of our image and they give us a black and white mask image which we can then use in post-production software. Now, in order to enable these into Emotion, we first need to select the objects that we want to give a layer ID to. So let's select this tree, for example. We go down into our properties panel here and here you can see we've got this layer ID option. If we enable that, it will give us the option of setting a number one to five for this particular object, which means we can essentially render out five separate black and white images alongside our kind of color layer for certain objects, which we set to each of these five IDs. Now, for the purpose of this image, I'm gonna set one ID being trees, one being rocks, one being the water, one being the landscape, and one being the building. So you've got to be kind of careful thinking about which five are the most useful that you're using layer IDs for. I'm not really sure why they've limited it in this software, but currently as it stands, we have five. So we're going to try and use those in the most efficient way possible. Now, as a quick way of doing this, what I usually like to do is I'm going to go into my kind of scene layers here. And I basically want to start to group some of these items by their particular object type. So for example, I've got all these rocks here and actually this painted vegetation is trees, this one's rocks. So I'm going to try first to group all my rocks together. A good way to do this is if you select one of your layers, click on these three dots on the side and we're just going to go move to new container and we're going to call this container rocks. So then I'm just going to select all of my rocks I've got here just by clicking on the top one, holding the shift key and clicking on the bottom. And then we're going to click and drag that into my rocks layer like so. So now I've got all of those rocks in there. If you've got any left over, we also want to locate those and we're going to try and move those in. So we want to essentially just pick up all of those rocks we've got and move them into that folder. So let's scroll this up, drop them in. And a good way to check is just to close the folder and turn it on and off and just see that you've got all of your rocks in there, which it looks like I do. Once you've got those, we can select the folder and it will select all of those objects in there. And now you can see for that folder, I can set my layer ID. So I'm just going to enable that and we're going to set that to a number one. I'm now going to do the same with my trees and my other layers in my kind of folders here. So we can set a different ID for each of them. And I'm going to kind of fast forward the video as I do this. Now I've set all of those layer IDs for each of those objects, we can see if we scroll through, if I click on rocks, that's set to one, click on tree, that's set to two, click on my water here, that's set to three, click on my walls, that's set to four, and my terrain is set to five. So each of those have a different number that they're set to. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna export this out and it will automatically export those layer IDs with it. So to do that, I'm just gonna select my image here, we're going to go and just check what our kind of image is set to in terms of its pixel size. So we've got 3000 by 3000, which is great for this particular image. Once we've set that, we're going to go to export here. I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to turn off this video export because we don't need that for this particular one. And just on the image, we're going to make sure here, let's just scroll this up so we can see it. Under details, we've got JPEG selected and we want to make sure we check all of these render layers. So we've got the sky, which is going to do a sky as a separate layer, layer one, two, three, four, and five. And they're going to export them as masks. Refinement, we don't really need that for this. So once we've set all those, we're then going to scroll down and hit start export. We're going to choose a folder for this. I'm just going to put it in this render folder hit select folder and it's going to start exporting those out and essentially what it's going to export is we're going to have an image for our kind of color layer of our file and then we're also going to have six extra images one for each of those one to five layer ids that we've set and also one for the sky so i'm going to let this export out and then we're going to kind of come back to the video and we're going to start to compose these together in photoshop 
Once your export has finished, we'll be left with both the image and also a folder of these layer IDs, which we've got here. So you can see we've got the sky there, we've got the building, we've got the water, trees and rocks as well. So in order to now work with these, we're now going to import these into Photoshop so we can then use them to help post-produce our image here. In order to do this, I'm just going to drop the image in that same folder. Then we're just going to copy, just control C, the kind of location of that, go into our Photoshop and we're going to go to File, Scripts and Load Files into Stack. What this would do is it will allow us to bring all these files in simultaneously into our Photoshop file. So we're just going to hit Browse there. We're going to locate each of those files just by copying in that location. And then we're just going to load all six of them in here and hit OK. And what this would do is it would just bring in all of those files together into one single Photoshop file that we can then work with there. And here we go as we load each of these in. And what's great about these is it essentially gives us layer masks in order to then work directly on particular parts of the image. So for example, if I just wanted to select the water here, if I hold the Alt key on my keyboard and click on the little eye icon, it will isolate that. Then I can go into the channels option and under RBG, I just hit the control key and left click on my mouse and it will create a selection from that kind of black and white mask. Then I can go back to my layers, I'm going to press Alt again to unhide that and then I'm just going to make a folder for this and apply this selection as a mask to that folder. So just by clicking on the mask tool, we'll call this water. What this then means that anything I do in that folder is now controlled by that mask and it will just work on that water layer. So let's say we want it a bit brighter, maybe we just want to kind of adjust the levels slightly there, we can work it there. It might be that you want to do the same to the sky. So again, hold the Alt key, click on the eye icon to isolate it, over to the channels, hold control and left click to select just that white area there and it will create a selection from it. And then again, we can create a folder and call it sky. And usually what I'll do with this is I'll create a folder for each of these properties, which then allow me to go in and fine tune different parts of those pieces. So perhaps we kind of want to make the sky a bit more blue there. We can tweak that as well. And we can go through each of these and start to really fine tune each of those elements. Here you can see I've now added some adjustments to each of these layers. We've got some kind of effect on the sky. I've changed the color slightly on the trees, made them more green and a little bit in more intensity there. I've just added a kind of levels and an extra texture onto that kind of building to make it slightly more kind of randomized on that texture as well. And also I've tweaked the color of the rock. So you can see I've just added these tweaks just in those folders to help bring out some of the elements of the image. As a final touch, I've just made this kind of last folder here. I'm gonna make a blank layer, take my brush, make a kind of white paintbrush, put it on around a 10% opacity here and I'm just going to start painting some of the trees in the distance here just slightly white there. Also a little bit on the building, a little bit in the background and on the tops here. You can also do a little bit kind of coming in from the corners as well. All this is going to do is essentially just add a bit of a fog to the back of the image and you can always sort of dampen it down slightly but it helps create a little bit of depth you can do the opposite by just making a blank layer. I'm going to pick some of the darker color on this water. Let's make it a little bit darker, put it on a multiply and then do the same thing in the corners just to make it slightly darker there. And what that would do is it would just add a bit of depth to the image, making the kind of background feel further away and the foreground feel closer. So there you go. This is how you create layer IDs in Twinmotion and how you start to use them to edit your image in Photoshop. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on rendering or creating drawings or images in Rhino, Twinmotion or V-Ray, please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.